So I just want to get this right out of the way here, because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people who are going to look at the end of this anime and say, hey, they didn't explain Ai's ability, or they didn't do this, or they didn't explain this, it was left very open-ended. I just want to say this, we're going to dive into everything in a deep dive here for sure, but just to get this out of the way, you can't look at this as I being a literal person and she had a supernatural ability that was going to get overly explained. This was literally a biblical tale. It was basically I representing the embodiment of evil and sin and testing humanity in the form of a biblical story. That's basically how you're supposed to look at this. And with that said, let's jump into the final episode of Babylon. This episode, I really enjoyed. Now, I've already seen some pretty hot takes about why this was stupid or how it didn't explain its ending or there was no reason for it. Everyone's entitled to their own opinions for sure, but I feel like many people may not be looking at what this anime was supposed to be from the beginning. And it was designed to be a political thriller, of course, but this was definitely using religious themes and undertones the entire way through. And I'm not here to say like I'm some religious nut job or anything like that. I actually don't believe in any religion. I have nothing really against it as long as people practice it in non-toxic ways. But I find the idea of it interesting in forms of tales. And I like it how this story, it kind of used the idea of basically testing humanity's ways and saying what is good and what is evil. It's a very basic idea for a concept. But that's almost like what the Bible represents, what's good and what's evil, and it's supposed to try to, like, guide humanity down the correct path, or at least that's what it was supposedly designed for. You obviously can decide for yourself if that's right or not. But I like how what I was supposed to be here was basically the same thing the snake was in the tale of Adam and Eve, the forbidden fruit, and what would humans do when basically told not to do something, but they kind of think, oh, that's really interesting, I want to do it anyway. I quite liked how this episode, it was very open-ended, and after the credits there, you basically see I with, you know, Zen's son, and basically you can interpret that in many ways, and we'll get into that for sure. I mean, it was pretty clear that this wasn't going to go over smoothly, and in fact, this was probably the bloodiest episode to date. I mean, sure, we didn't see someone get chopped into pieces, but pretty much the entire president squad there was killing themselves left and right, and the president nearly killed himself had he not convinced Zen to do the right thing and murder him, so that girl would not commit suicide and basically say it's okay to do so. I really liked how they were building up to that because half of this episode was literally just the president talking to who we thought was I, and probably it definitely was. And I liked the idea of how she was basically telling this story of how she got pregnant at a young age and how basically her parents said to abort the baby, but she decided against it. She actually really loved her baby, but unfortunately the baby ended up dead. I liked how what they did immediately was say, okay, we're not going to let these characters be stupid, we're going to have an interpreter, because this is foreign languages, things like that, and I like how basically the person who could die was the interpreter, which Zen offered to do himself, but because Zen has a family, this man was like, no, go home to your family. I like what the president did here, because it was very logical in basically not, basically pushing someone over the deep end. This was someone by all rights of the definition was crazy, was willing to jump off a building, and you had to basically play to their feelings, being like, well, I actually don't know what's right or not, so let's do this. Why don't you hold off a bit, and if I decide what is right is actually suicide, I'll do it with you. Which is kind of like a way of playing into someone's feelings of being like, oh, you actually understand me, so I don't actually have to feel alone like I currently do. It was actually a really interesting ploy, and pretty much everyone in the audience and basically watching on TV were kind of cheering for the president because they understood what he was saying, but of course to her it kind of felt like she wasn't alone. It was a really good ploy, and I was like, okay, that's interesting how it was going so smoothly. But I like how the president for this entire journey here, since we started focusing in on him, was trying to figure out what is good and what's evil, because that would lead to the answer of, is suicide evil or a good thing? And I like how, when he came to the idea that continuing is good and ending is evil, that he started to put the earpiece in, and that's when you got the real eye voice. I was like, oh man, this is going right back to episode 7 flashbacks, where Zen's rushing, he's frantic, and just people are dying left and right. And this is where it got really biblical and basically heavy on the themes. Now, a lot of people are probably going to say, we never really got to understand Ai's ability, or we didn't really see what was her purpose. And you can kind of interpret Ai's physical being in many ways. I mean, you could look at her as actually being a person who lost a kid, and basically that kind of set her off on the deep end. And whether God and the devil and things like that are actually in this world or not, that's obviously you can interpret that to your own ways. But the idea of many biblical stories are basically testing humanity. And this kind of felt like an apocalypse to a certain degree of the embodiment of evil and sin testing humanity to the point 
of can they figure out what is good and what is evil and in doing so they use suicide as basically the test and Zen's entire goal since basically episode 7 was to murder I that's what he wanted to do and they leave it very open-ended where you hear a bang but you don't see did he kill her you can look after the credits be like oh did Zen do it did he die did she live? Did she take his family? But I think you can interpret the ending in a few different ways. One, he didn't pull the trigger. The bang was really just a figurative thing where she maybe did her little hand motion and basically suicide didn't get past globally, things like that. You can interpret it as he did kill her. Zen basically went to hell. He didn't get to actually be with his family, he went to jail, things like that. Or you can interpret it as humanity, they didn't fall victim into basically going completely for the forbidden fruit and maybe I was able to kind of like pass on peacefully in some different way, whether she continued with her life, maybe starting a new family, or she basically did end up dead and, you know, her heaven was basically being able to be with a son and obviously just using Zen Sun as a figurative thing to basically kind of propel that. I quite like the ending because it was all about the theme and the theme was very basic. What is good? What is evil? And the idea of coming to the conclusion that good is continuing and evil is ending. But that's pretty much most stories that you can read in a Bible. Like, it's basically saying, you know, this is the story at hand. We want you to do the good thing, right? They're very basic, but I like how they combined it into, like, an anime story where they use the topic of suicide and how, you know, we didn't really know, like, how is she doing this? How does she have this ability to just whisper in the ear? But similar to the snake just whispering in Adam and Eve's ear to say, hey, maybe try that fruit after all. It's so easy to be tempted because humans are very easily tempted. It's something that we're very faulty at. We're told not to do something and we're like, oh, no one's looking. Why not do it anyway? So I thought it was quite interesting because usually when you have something to this scale, like some like final boss, it's big action set pieces or just like, you know, it's talk no jitsu. And even though there was a lot of talking here, what they were saying was kind of being built up for weeks and weeks. It's not like it came out of thin air, right? And I think the idea that the president dying, I don't think is the most shocking thing. The most shocking thing is then killing the president so it looks like murder and not suicide because that's basically left open. Most of the people would say, oh my God, this foreigner, they shot the president, but they're not going to say the president wanted to kill himself because he was standing up there, but he never did anything. So basically it looks like he was probably going to maybe prove why suicide was wrong. So then Zen will look like the villain. There's like just so many ways to interpret what's happened. But what I appreciate about the final episode is that from day one, this show was all about a message and that message was surrounding suicide. And at first I thought it was just some crazy lunatic who wanted to end the world. And even though technically that still is kind of true, I like the idea of it being more on this like biblical theme of basically testing humanity's ways and is humanity going to fall victim to sin or are they going to progress down a more positive direction. And I think because the president basically had Zen kill him, I think it pretty much says to me that humanity didn't fall victim completely and the suicide law wasn't going to pass to this degree. Like maybe the suicide law could pass in the future, but not because some lunatic was manipulating the masses with mystical abilities. And the only thing I was really worried about going into this final episode was that they were going to overly explain I. And I'm sure there's going to be some people who said they want a 100% clear-cut answer of what she represents, but I'm glad they left it as biblical. Because literally, if you were to explain how she got this mystical ability or something, it would just feel so worthless. It would feel like, you know, you're trying to explain magic, essentially. And if you look at this story, it's supposed to be something on a more religious undertone. I mean, we literally had the president bring up religion nonstop, and at first I thought it was just because it was his faith and things like that. It's fine, talk about it. It makes sense, especially when you're discussing suicide. But the fact that it was tying to this Babylon story all along and how I literally was representing the sins of humanity, I thought was a nice way to kind of wrap it up. There's lots of things that you can interpret and kind of think about by yourself, but I like how they didn't decide to like tie up everything as like, okay, we're going to make sure you understand everything from a clear cut point of view. No, we're going to make you understand what the idea of I was and what the idea of this test was, but it's up to you to interpret it for yourself which is kind of what the Bible is supposed to represent in theory. I actually want to bring up one thing. There's like this one story, I think it's from like the Old Testament or something. It's a very messed up story as most of the tales are in the Bible. But there's like this tale where God's basically saying like, hey, you know, I can do anything and this guy's never going to lose faith. And basically he just like plagues his family and he like he kills the cattle. His family ends up dead. The dude has like sores all over his body. And then God's just like, see, he's still praying to me. He still believes in me. It was just basically this like super messed up tale to prove that like his faith would never waver. But it's like, it's super messed up. And I like how in some ways, like 
it just kind of represents like in, if you look at Babylon you look at those tales like that it's like this weird way to test humanity and no matter how bad it gets it's supposed to say humanity will be okay in the end it's just so interesting to me like I just love thinking about episode 1 all the way to 12 and how each of the story arcs episodes 1 through 3 4 through 7 and 8 through 12 they have like their own idea of what they're trying to say but when you combine it and see what this journey was representing all along I think it's just so fascinating to see how it was really just trying to test humanity in a way that I can't really compare to any anime that I've seen. Other stories, sure, because the idea of basically the end of the world or basically some form of sin kind of taking the embodiment of a person, testing the waters. I've seen that before, but I like how Babylon did it. And I know this isn't going to be a show that's going to please everyone. I've seen some hot takes. I'm sure there's going to be plenty of people saying the ending makes no sense and the idea of just simply saying good and evil is continuing or ending. But that's kind of what the Bible represented in most of the tales within the Bible. And I know I'm bringing up the Bible and religion a hell of a lot. And as I said, I'm not a religious person. But I think the idea is interesting for stories. And that's kind of what this show has been designed to be. I mean, it was pretty clear for a while. But when you bring up Adam and Eve and the tempting of the apple and basically having her become the snake, it kind of says that this is supposed to be a religious story. And that's why you're not supposed to take I literal as a person who has some supernatural abilities like she came from My Hero Academia or something like that. No, it's supposed to be something bigger than humanity. So that's why I'm bringing it up. I'm not trying to like shove religion down your throat. I'm not trying to insult someone's religion. This is just what the story is supposed to be and how it's supposed to be interpreted. And that's why I like it. This is one of those endings that I'm going to be thinking about for a long time. Not because it left a bad taste in my mouth or a good taste in my mouth, but rather it was interesting. It really had me thinking, be like, huh, this didn't give you a clear cut yes or no right or wrong but letting the viewer interpret many things throughout this entire journey of what we want to see but making sure we understood that this was supposed to be a test for humanity using a biblical story to do so wrapped up in a real world setting because usually when you have stories like this it's set in a very far off past right it's like these characters don't even have modern technology and these are the tests about oh, the person was growing hungry, but a miracle came, but then manipulated the miracle, and that's why they were punished by Satan or something like that. I like how this was basically put on a modern-day world such as ourselves, and it's kind of interesting to think about, should religion actually be real, what types of sins and tests would humanity actually have to deal with? And the idea of putting it on a suicide law is really interesting to me, because should actually religion and you know, heaven and hell be real, what would suicide actually be? Would that be something to be punished for or to be saved from, right? And I think that's why the show is so interesting and why its themes actually work so well for me. This isn't something where you're going to feel a 100% way that you're going to say, I 100% love it, I 100% hate it. But I think this is a show where I just feel it's great. It, I feel it's great across the board. And I feel like it's one of the most Brandon design anime I've ever seen because it just feels like it hits my love for politics and it hits my love for thrillers mixed with a thought provoking story and ending that I just want to rewatch. I want to rewatch it right now and I probably will rewatch it later on today and uh, definitely going to be doing a big video on Babylon. I'll probably have it like be like spoiler free for like the first third of the video just so I can get people to watch it. But I definitely want to do like a deep dive on why I like this show across the board really put my thoughts down in a pretty precise manner because this is just such a good anime to me I know it's going to get ripped into it's probably going to get negative review bomb across the board because people don't like its ending but I think as long as people don't look at it as just being a literal person but more of a biblical story you're going to feel a lot differently I definitely think so I don't think this is going to be everyone's favorite anime but I definitely think those who have been enjoying it and not just been hate watching it like I've seen some people do probably will enjoy this ending because I mean the past two episodes have been very thought-provoking the only thing I would change about this anime is I actually think based on the religious themes they brought up in this episode obviously they've been there since the beginning I actually wouldn't mind like an episode 13 obviously it's over so we're not getting it but had this episode 12 you know been a different episode than episode 13 been this episode I think it would have been interesting to have even more like beating you over the head of just really bringing up the idea of the sins of humanity that's the only thing I think I'd really change. Otherwise, I actually thought the pacing was tight. Like, this was only a three novel series. They adapted the entire thing. And I think the way they paced it, it felt very well structured to me. And I mean, you kept my hype for over a month when you left me off on episode seven. And when I jumped back into it, I was even more enthusiastic. This was my most anticipated episode of the week. And I think they delivered. I'm glad Japan's still loving it. I know North American and pretty much everywhere else is probably going to rip into it. But I loved it. I don't want more of it. I actually thought it ended in a satisfying way where I'm like, you know what? 
you left me off on a good note. I have a good taste in my mouth, and I'm going to rewatch it. I'm going to make more Babylon content probably in a couple of weeks here. And yeah, if you like this review, definitely check that out. Probably the third week of February, if I'm predicting this right. Probably third week of February, second week of February, in that area. There'll be a Babylon analysis of some form. But what did everyone think of episode 12? Love it, hate it, favorite moment? What do you think about the ending? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like, and remember to hit that subscribe button if you happy new round here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.